Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gamer Tech video of myself, Marta, where I'm here as always with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. We've got quite a bit of AMD news to start things off today, the first of which is regarding Navi. Now what we actually have for you today is some recent driver code updates for Navi on the Linux ecosystem. And the key code drops don't really reveal like a huge amount about Navi, unfortunately, but they do actually contain an interesting parcel of information that actually runs counter to some rumours that we've been hearing about Navi. Now, I'm sure you've heard the rumblings and rumours that Navi would not be based on GCN, would actually be the first post-GCN GPU design. Now, if the graphics card driver for Linux can be believed, that's actually not going to be the case. It does seem to be based on GCN still. Now, I just want to point out that although we have heard rumours and rumblings for some time that it, Navi was not going to be based on GCN, we have actually heard from our own sources that it would be based on GCN and would improve things in the pipeline such as geometry and pixel pushing performance. So long story short, if this information turns out to be correct, then our source was right on the money. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Why does the Linux code even hint this, I hear you ask? Well, there's a report on the Pharonix website where they uncovered new GFX with 1010 target definitions and registered changes while looking at Git repositories. And the GFX 1010 nomenclature is referring to Navi. Now we have a few new instructions and things like that that don't, don't really mean a whole lot by themselves, but the language used does seem to confirm GCN. For example, we have a code piece that reads EF AMD GPU Mac AMD GCN GFX 1010. Now, of course, this is far from 110% confirmation, but it does seem to be rather convincing, and again, this is information that we have heard from our source as well, that we will be seeing a GCN design for Navi. Now, I would fully expect to know exactly what's going on with Navi at Computex, which is not that far away, actually. It's almost a month away. Is it on the 28th of May? And, of course, there's rumblings as well that we're going to be seeing Navi revealed in some respect at E3. And I speculated previously that what we would see is an architecture reveal, um, perhaps a prosumer card reveal at Computex, and then the gaming card reveal at E3. Of course, that is pure speculation on my part, based on rumours that we have heard um, across the internet, but that wouldn't make sense, I think. Regardless, though, I'm going to be very curious to see whether or not this pans out. Now, I did say I had a few pieces of information for you about... Well, regarding AMD, sorry, should I say. And the next is actually a tease from Biostar about the X570 series of motherboards. So we are going to be getting a full launch of this particular series of motherboards at, well, you guessed it, Computex. And these are going to be for the AMD Ryzen 3000 series of processors. So we're going to be seeing them launch, of, of, I say, sometime between 20th of May and then June the 1st, because again, Computex is right at the end of May. Now, we don't have full information like prices or, again, even an exact release date or anything like that, but there has been a press release sent out to people. So this isn't a leak. This is 110% confirmed by Biostar, thanks to PC Games N. Uh, that's where I found this particular piece of information. But we also do have some confirmed specifications for these motherboards, and we are actually going to be seeing, you guess it, PCIe 4.0 support. Now, at least for the Biostar X570 Racing series, we are going to be seeing three PCIe 4X16 slots, and there are also going to be three PCIe 4 slots which can be used for network or storage AICs. There are three M2 dot, sorry, M.2 slots, as well as the usual array of inputs like DisplayPort, HDMI, USBs, so you obviously 3.1, and we also see Type-C included here as well. Now, the interesting thing that I kind of want to focus on for this particular motherboard is the fact that it does have some pretty beefed up cooling. Now, Paul has actually heard from some of his sources that better power delivery and better cooling were going to be important for the 570 series from AMD. Now next up we have something interesting regarding NVIDIA. 
And for once, no, this is not a new GTX Touring card, which seems to be all I talk about lately when it comes to NVIDIA. No, what we actually have is a find of some code which seems to suggest that NVIDIA is working on a 2-in-1 Shield tablet. Now, this code was found by a custom ROM developer in the latest Shield experience, and it suggests that there is new software in development for a device which is currently codenamed Mystique, and this code, which is has a feature called NVDTXP, probably short for NVIDIA Desktop Experience, not exactly a Sherlockian leap of logic there, I'm sure you'll agree, seems to handle switching between three UI modes, desktop, tablet, and dynamic. So what do these actually mean? Well, it's hard to say, but tablet mode, I think, is pretty much what it says on the tin, would be for a standard tablet interface, and a dynamic mode between the desktop mode and the tablet mode. And the desktop mode, it's hard to say exactly what this would be, but it's probably for interfacing with a bottom-mounted taskbar, excuse me, and multi-window support. Now, you may recall that there was source code floating around some point last year as well, and it's going to be a 13.5-inch display. And, also, according to some reports, it's actually going to feature the Xavier SoC which might seem like an odd choice, given that I usually say that word, or those words, in the same sentences like AI and stuff like that, so it might seem a bit much for like a lot of tablets, but it might be a stripped-down version, something like that, because the Xavier is, or well, it can be, so one of the versions is quite small. So if it was a stripped-down version, perhaps, with some of the features that aren't necessary for the Shield, um, if that's what, even what it ends up being called, uh, taken out, then that could definitely make sense. Now, NVIDIA haven't really had the best of luck when it comes to portable hardware, but clearly they are not giving up that easily. Whether or not this will be any different, unfortunately, time will have to tell. So we're going to finish things up today with some news, and it's probably going to be a touch disappointing, I know it was for me, regarding Persona 5S. Now, there are many people, including myself, that after all the rumours of Persona 5 S started floating around the internet, that it would be a portable version of Persona 5 for the Switch, of course. Especially after the recent announcement of Persona 5 Royal, which adds a new party member, expands the story, new enemies, supports the PS4 Pro, and tons more. And by the way, I'm going to be getting Persona 5 Royal because that is exactly what I wanted, just more Persona 5, although it's already a really, really long game. Anywho, we're talking about Persona 5 S right now, so there was hopes, at least in my head, when I heard about Persona 5 Royal, that that, that would be what's coming to the Switch, like a mobile version of it, that would be cool. But unfortunately, that's not the case. What it is, is a sort of Dynasty Warriors style game called Persona 5 Scramble Phantom Strikers. There's a trailer available, which is going to be playing as the background to this particular piece of audio. But there's also going to be a link to it in the description below this video. Unfortunately, we don't know the release date, but it is coming to Switch and PS4. So technically, a Persona 5 game is coming to Switch, but not really in the way that we all hoped. Basically, the trailer shows Joker just fighting off several enemies at once using his persona, Arsene, and just, again, doing it in a sort of Dynasty Warriors-style game, like fast-paced, beat him up, something like that. So it looks cool, don't get me wrong, it does look cool, but it's not really what I wanted when it comes to a Persona 5 game on the Switch. Persona 5 Royal looks amazing, and I'm going to be getting it because I loved Persona 5, it's genuinely one of my favourite games of that year. So... It's not the end of the world, I can just play it on PS4, that's fine. Obviously I have one because I played the original Persona 5, but I did hope for a mobile version on Switch. That would just be so cool. Maybe they just can't do it, maybe it's too long. I mean, the full playthrough of the game that I did uh, clocked in around 90 hours, and that was just the story. No, by no means go for 100% completion, no <laughs> no, I, I, hey, who's got time for that? Not me, certainly not. So yeah, a bit of a disappointment, but hey, can't win them all, I suppose. One out of two ain't bad at all. So, with all that said, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, the support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time.